The term Titan has its origin in Greek mythology. The Titans, also known as the Elder Gods, once ruled the Earth. They were immortal giants of phenomenal strength and knowledge, who were said to live at the top of Mount Othris. In modern language, the term Titan is usually used to represent something or someone of incredible strength and power, like the metal titanium, the uh, Titanic, let's skip that one, and yes, of course this, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan. And with that rather dramatic introduction out of the way, let's move on. First, to get a better picture of the Titan GPU, I want to start with the GTX 680, the first consumer Kepler card. It was meant to compete with the Radeon HD 7970, which at that time it did successfully. However, in terms of die size, at just 294 square millimeters, it was tiny nearly half the size of the usual flagship GPU, and more in line with a mid-range GPU. As a non-tech, Ryan Smith noted that somewhere in the bowels of Nvidia, Big Kepler certainly lives, waiting for its day in the sun. Before that, here is a very brief overview of the Kepler architecture. Baked on the new 28 nanometer node, Kepler was very much an evolution of the Fermi architecture. Here are some of the more important changes. Firstly, the change to a new streaming multiprocessor called SMX. These now also ran synchronous with the graphics clock, rather than at two times the graphics clock like with Fermi. Dynamic parallelism, which allowed the GPU to generate work for itself, rather than having to go back to the CPU. And lastly, HyperQ, which increased the amount of work queues in the GPU, allowing for a potentially higher GPU utilization. There were certainly already clues of what was to come. For example, in October 2010, the aptly named Titan Supercomputer became operational. It featured 18,688 Opteron CPUs and an equal amount of GK110 GPUs, the same we would later find used in the GCX Titan. And finally, on February 19, 2013, the GTX Titan was unveiled at a, for that time, staggering $1,000 MSRP. The Titan consists of 14 functional SMX units for a total of 2,688 CUDA cores, paired with 6GB of 6GHz GDDR5, going through a 384-bit bus. Core clock is stock at a base of 837MHz, and total transistor count being a whopping 7.1 billion. Nvidia justified this one grand price tag by marketing the Titan as a prosumer level card by offering much better double precision performance on the Titan which would usually be only reserved for professional grade, and so much more expensive cars like their Quadro and Tesla line of GPUs. But now that we're in 2019, the outlook on that outrageous price tag has perhaps changed a little bit, with the consumer RTX 2080 Ti coming in at $1200, and the successor of the Titan, the Titan RTX, at an eye-watering $2500. In any case, it's time to revisit the original big Kepler Titan in some gaming performance testing. Despite having a base clock of 837 MHz, the Titan uses GPU boost to dynamically change the speed it will boost to, based on variables like the power target and temperature. In the case of my Titan, it would run at 967 MHz boost, in most cases. In order to maintain that boost in all workloads, I've set the fan speed at 70% in heavy titles to maintain that 967 MHz clock speed. To provide some comparison, I have also included the results of the Gigabyte Windforce GCX 1066GB and of my two EVGA GTX 570s 
with 2.5GB of VRAM each in SLI. We're off to a rocky start in Battlefield 1, where I tested the first level of the campaign using the Ultra preset. The 1060 here handily beats the Titan by a big 25%, with the Titan scoring 69 FPS average and 53 on the 1% low. Frame times are generally quite good with a few minor spikes. The gap shrinks however in GTA 5, using my custom run with the very high preset, where the GTX 1060 is now only 16% ahead of the Titan, which scores 73 FPS on average and 53 on the 1% low. Frame times are quite busy here, especially in certain areas, but they are still smooth enough during gameplay. Things get interesting in the classic, but will it run Crisis? Here I tested Crisis 3 on the intensive grass level using the very high preset. Here the Titan and 1060 are basically tied, with only 1 FPS difference on average and only 1% low. Very good showing from the Titan. Frame times are good in most areas, but there are a few very large spikes which can be quite jarring during gameplay. Moving on to Dirt Valley, where I tested the built-in benchmark using the Ultra preset. Here the Titan actually beats the GTX 1060 by 2 FPS average, I was quite surprised by that. And the frame times are also very well apart from a few spikes which are caused by the benchmark. I was again very surprised by this result, which I tested uh, quite a few times to see if it was actually replicable. On to my favorite, Nico Bellix GTA 4. On my custom run using the very high preset, the Titan is also quite close to the 1060, dropping behind only 4 frames on average to an average of 81. Though frame times are, as is usual for GTA 4, absolutely terrible with a lot of spikes across the board. Next on to everyone's favorite, Fortnite. Here in a 100 player battle royale round using the ultra preset, things are rather bleak for the Titan, with the 1060 storming ahead by 25% again just like in Battlefield 1. Here the Titan only got an average of 72 FPS and 57 on the 1% low. Uh, apart from a few hiccups, the frame times in Fortnite are actually quite good. Next up I tested Hitman to test DirectX 12 performance. Here I ran the boat level using the medium preset. Here the Titan is 14% slower using the DirectX 12 API. In DirectX 12 it averaged 67 FPS which then shrank to 59 FPS using DirectX 12. Moving on to the newest titles test for which I unfortunately do not have GPU comparisons, but I have tested the impact of the quality settings. First on Battlefield 5 where I ran 64 player multiplayer on the Narvik snow map. Here you can see that in order to maintain 60 FPS at all times, we already have to lower the quality settings quite a bit to a mix of medium and low, and the Titan does not appear to have aged well in this game. And finally it's much of the same in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I used with the built-in benchmark. Here it's hammering the Titan even harder, which only managed to get above 60 FPS using the lowest quality preset. What is also interesting is that medium quality and above all produced about the same performance. It does not look good for Kepler here. Before coming to conclusions, I do want to say that it's interesting to see how similar the Titan and 1060 can perform, despite how incredibly different they are from each other. The Titan with its massive amount of CUDA calls running at a relatively low clock speed, compared to the 1060's fewer high clocked calls. Both have the same amount of VRAM, but the 1060's run faster, yet goes through a smaller memory bus. And in terms of TDP, the 1060 is rated at only half of that of the Titan. In terms of performance, I do think it is overall fair to say that Kepler has not aged very well. In all the, all the titles, the Titan can keep up quite well with the 1060, even matching it in a certain few cases. But it seems the newer the title, the worse performance becomes. 
looking at a gap of 25% in Battlefield 1 and Fortnite is indeed very big. And in the newest, most challenging titles it really gets thrown around hard, delivering quite poor performance across the board. You could try to improve performance by overclocking, which I have tried as well, yet on the stock BIOS it really restricts you here with GPU boost and the thermal and power targets. I was able to reach just above 1 GHz on the core, but GPU boost would often interfere, it does really have a mind of its own. Uh, I would really, if you do want to overclock, I would recommend a custom BIOS like the one from Skynet, which can disable GPU boost and lift all these power and thermal restrictions. I've not personally done this to mine, but users have reported great results with it. I must say I really enjoyed playing around with a card that was once so elusive, but can now be picked up for relatively little money. Though, if you're purely looking for a good performance gaming card, a used 1060 is arguably a much better buy, with better performance and way less power draw. But if it is cool factor you're after, the Titan of course wins by a mile, at least in my books. And for now that's all I have to say about the GTX Titan. If you liked this video, a like would be much appreciated. If you have a comment, please do leave one below or contact me on Twitter. If you want to be kept up to date on future projects, do consider subscribing to my channel. Well that is all for now and bye bye.